。私はすでに80歳になろうとしています。私の人生を振り返ると、異分野の交流、異文化の交流、異国との交流、異なった分野の人々との交流、まあ、こういう自分にないものとの出会いということが私の人生を本当に豊かにしてくれました。1960, hundreds of thousands of Japanese people took to the streets to protest the US Japan Anpo Security Treaty, bringing diplomatic relations to a new low. In 1961, President Kennedy and Prime Minister Ikeda saw the need to improve mutual understanding and dialogue between the countries. From these summits, Kolkan was born. Japan and America are not going to be able to do the communication. This is not going to be able to do the communication. This is not going to be able to do the communication. This is not going to be able to do the communication. This is not going to be able to do the communication. こういった面まで広く戦略的に捉えた日米関係を構築しなければいけないというそういう思いが強かったそれが1961年カルコンができた背景だと思いますよ。The US and Japan have a long history together. Both countries rose to prominence in the 20th century, but today they are extraordinarily close partners. We have a security alliance, a treaty alliance, and our militaries operate closely together. We have an economic partnership that employs Americans across the United States, and also we work together economically across the region and across the world. But most importantly, we have strong ties between the people of the United States and the people of Japan. I take the relationship between the United States and Japan very personally. I had the good fortune to serve as a businessman in Japan from 1988 to 91. I was so honored to come back to serve as U.S. ambassador to Japan from 2017 through 2019. The relationship that we have with Japan is of critical economic importance to America. Together, our combined economies constitute 30% of the world's GDP. And importantly, we have more U.S. military stations in Japan than any place else in the world. It's been critical that we work closely together for our national security interests. Japan and the United States are the very closest of allies, and the role that we play in the Indo Pacific. Is absolutely critical to safety and security in the entire region. The personal and educational ties that Kolkan does such a great job of facilitating have made a wonderful difference in terms of strengthening our relationship with Japan. I applaud Kolkan for its work in making sure this continues. Governments can sign treaties,、uh, businessmen can strike deals, but for a long term sustainable partnership, the citizens of both of our democracies really need to know each other, understand each other. And want to be friends with each other. And this is the remarkable part of our relationship, the part that I feel so strongly Kolkan、uh, must continue to support. For the past 60 years, Kolkan has supported the Japan US relationship, serving as an incubator for new ideas, utilizing public and private sector working groups, and exchanging viewpoints between Kolkan members, thus producing unique solutions in the areas of education, culture, and intellectual dialogue. 文化教育対話これは逆にカルコンがの存在があの示している通りね結局絶対必要なものだということなんだと思いますね官民揃ってのそういうアンダーテイキングがね。Today コルコン works on helping young Americans go to Japan, young Japanese come to America, but they also help in building the next generation skills and experience. Working with each other, solving problems together across the globe. And so, Kulkan is a very active organization making sure that the people to people aspect of our relationship remains supported and remains strong. Kulkan believes young people are key ambassadors of educational and cultural interchange. One initiative is the JET program, which invites English speaking college graduates to Japan to teach their language and culture at a local level. The JET program places teachers and local boards of education all around the country. So, a lot of times you're not just experiencing Japan through the cities, but also through the local prefectures. When I went to Japan as an English teacher, my assumptions were that all Japanese students are very studious, they're very quiet, they all listen to the teachers. And one of the fascinating things for me when I was on the JET program was learning that Japanese students are like any students around the world, where you have some of the good students who really 
really wanted to listen and learn to the, you know, the foreign English teacher and be really dedicated to their studies. But of course, there were some other students who were a little bit more mischievous, and it was always fun to interact with them and try to inspire them to learn English. As I returned to the U.S., to continue putting myself in situations where I can have that cultural exchange, and that's what led me to continue working in a Japanese environment when I came back, because I felt like it is not just me having to travel, it is at home to continue that kind of exchange is really important to me and something in the future I hope to be able to keep doing. As a Black woman and as a Black American, I found that in my travels, I sometimes had to explain myself and I was met with stereotypes or assumptions. But in doing so, not only did I get to change some people's opinion of what they may have seen or read online, I also learned how to represent and to explain myself better. And I believe that if I stayed in my hometown or in America, I would not have been able to have the opportunity to understand how to represent myself and how to share my culture with other people. Colcon published the ERC final report, studying the issue of student mobility. Increasing student exchange is an essential component for deepening bilateral relations, as evidenced by President Biden and Prime Minister Suga at their first summit, agreeing to encourage more U.S. students to come to Japan to study. Colcon understands that national governments can only do so much. Working at a local level can produce more immediate as well as longer lasting results. I think subnational engagement is becoming a very, very important because the, the city to city engagement will create long-lasting relationships. When the president changes, nation-to-nation -nation relationship is not as stable in today's society. The COVID-19 global pandemic changed life as we knew it. Colcon created opportunities from this crisis for building even stronger ties between the countries. This last year of our global pandemic has been very hard. Uh, for people to, on people to people exchange, and especially for students. So many students were ready to go to overseas to study in Japan, they couldn't go. But in the meantime, we've taken full use of all the technology available today. Most of us are aware that Zoom and other kinds of platforms are the new virtual reality that we've been able to double down and take advantage of during this time when we've been separated physically. And I think it's learned, there has been a lot of learning this past year. How can the platforms actually help us to expand participation in the U.S.-Japan partnership? Our governments talk more often than they did in the past. Um, we have students now who can uh, enter the classroom of Japanese, uh, in Japanese universities in ways they couldn't in the past. Karokon ga tanjou shite kara 60 nen. Bunka, kyouiku, chiteki kouri o tsujite, nichibei kanke no shinka wa tsuzukimasu. これ the 21st century is going to bring us all kinds of new opportunities and all kinds of new challenges to, to work through together. So I'm excited about the 60th anniversary, but I'm really excited about the years ahead as well. Colcon has played a critical role in facilitating student mobility. And in our interconnected world, this work is more important than ever. I congratulate Colcon on 60 years of achievement the bonds between the United States and Japan have never been stronger, and I know the best is yet to come. どんなもんでも歴史の風雪をしのいで長く続いたものには尊さがあります。カルコンが生まれて60年、私たちの国、日本とアメリカは助け合い、力を寄せ合って難しいチャレンジであればあるほど 
カルコンという善意のブリッジが太平洋をつないでいました同盟を一貫して精神面で支えてきましたでそして私たちは今日に至って日米同盟をどこまでも未来を向いた希望の同盟とすることができたのであります若い人たちにお願いしたいのはぜひ人生の若い時期でこのような交流をトライしてみてくださいきっと後悔はしない人生になると思います。